just for Savannah. Do you want me to just use that as a guide or? Use, use that as a guide. Okay. I don't know where I got this, but okay. This is a, this is the first speech evaluation, so yeah, you can use okay. it. Okay. So our second speaker is going to be uh, Bindu, and her evaluator is Robert Schneider. So Scheidler. Robert could, Scheidler, I'm sorry. He is so quick to catch that, you can tell that it happens <laughs> all the time, right? I'm primed and ready, my God. <laughs> Robert Scheidler, he's a quick on the draw there. My God, you would make Gunsmoke uh, look like child's play. There's a lot so, of factors, yeah. Yes. Robert, could you please uh, read to us what Bindu's objectives are for her first speech tonight? Oh, I didn't get the... Uh, okay. Uh, well, it's her first speech, and uh, she has a title, so it's five to seven minutes, and the title is Home Cooking, an Essential Practice for Life. Okay. Love it. Thank you. All right, so uh, for Bindu's introduction, um, some fun, she's going to present us with some fun facts uh, about um, cooking and why it's important. And she's also going to educate us with uh, the events that she feels led to the decline in home cooking. So this should be very interesting, and obviously it applies to everyone. We all eat, right? So please help me welcome Bindu, home cooking. An essential practice for life. An essential practice for life. Then do. Thank you, Toastmaster. During my childhood days, Sundays used to be the only day we used to consume non vegetarian food. It was one such Sunday, and my dad decided to go to the market to get some fresh chicken. I still remember I had just turned 15 and my siblings and my mom were away from home and my dad thought it was a perfect opportunity for me to learn cooking. I followed my dad's instruction and I started adding all the fresh ingredients to the chicken first, like the onion, the ginger garlic and the tomato, followed by the dry ingredients, which is the coriander powder, cumin powder, garam masala and salt. I finally added a dash of co coconut oil and mixed them up all with my hand. I let it rest for a few minutes and I pressure cooked it till I heard the first whistle. Disclaimer to people who doesn't know, I'm an Indian and we have a tradition of uh, cooking and eating with our clean hands. Growing up seeing my parents cook my favorite meal, I always thought that cooking was very time consuming and very complicated. To my surprise, uh, this recipe was one of the easiest and the quickest and mouth-watering uh, chicken curry I would have tasted till date. The color, the aroma, the texture, and the overwhelming taste was so perfect that I felt that the cook in me was born that day. I was in love with the craft, an untamed, uninhibited uh, uh, love that went deep in my vein and my stomach for that matter. Mr. Toastmasters, fellow Toastmasters, and my dear guest, if I think there is no guest. A very good evening to one and all. Today is my first prepared speech and the topic I chose is home cooking, an essential skill for life. 20 years back uh, in my family, people used to think that eating out was very unhealthy as restaurant culture was not very prominent as it is now in India. I come from a very conservative family where women are very used to cooking three meals a day. The food that they cooked is one sumptuous meal not understanding uh, the effort that goes behind this cooking, I still remember how I used to tell my friends that I wanted to become a housewife just like my mom. I'm a mom myself and I totally understand it's not as easy as it looks and tastes, but this practice is definitely rewarding and benefiting. I strongly believe that home cooking is one, one skill that everyone should try and practice in their life, regardless of gender. Let me tell you a fun fact about uh, why it is important to cook and there is a link between our belly and our brain. Do you all know that uh, we have two brains? Human physiology says that we have two brains. One is the brain in our head that has 100 million neurons that constantly send messages to our body telling us uh, how to work and how to behave. 
similar to our brain we have another organ in our body which uh, controls our mental and physical functions of our body interestingly gut is one of our brain and it also has 100 million neurons just like our brain and the antidepressant in our body is produced in our gut more than in our brain so the kind of food that we put in our stomach can control anything from how we feel how we think and how we act so this might be the major link to a uh, modern disease uh, epidemic globally from uh, obesity to cardiovascular disease and even mental health there is a quote that says that show me what you uh, eat and i'll tell you what you are so the kind of food we eat tells a lot about what we are as a person uh the highs and lows of our life is controlled by our emotions as well as these chemicals that go from our belly to our brain scientific understanding of nutrition is still primitive but from what i understood or what mattered the most about one's health what not, was not necessarily uh, the nutrition that is good or bad what predicted to be a healthy diet uh, was most uh, more importantly was determined by the fact whether it was cooked by a human or if, a, if the food was cooked by a corporation we all love fast food and the restaurant food more than our home cooked food the reason why is because corporation cooked food differently there are three main ingredients that corporation usually use in vast amount which are the fat sugar and salt the reason why uh the corporation used them in vast amount was because it was incredibly cheap uh attractive and addictive my love for cooking obviously started because of the love for food but as i aged i was fascinated to read a lot about the link between the belly and our brain and also how food can help fight and prevent diseases research shows that the home cooking has declined by half since mid 60s because of this food industry had taken over our diets we have been daunted about cooking by these industries and marketing messages that are flattering our sense of busyness and implicitly telling us that we don't have time to cook and we are losers if we have time to cook let me tell you about an event uh, that happened in the past which in us which deliberately dismantled uh, home cooking by the food industry During World War II, uh, the food industry decided to work with the government to feed troops. So they came up with the new technology of uh, freeze dry and creating instant coffee and instant uh, orange juice. Once the World War was over, they didn't know what to do with this new technology, other than selling to us. If you ask a woman in a household what's the best thing that you like in the household, most of them would say. cooking because cooking is kind of an creative outlet in early 60s and 70s when feminist revolution took over uh, and when large amount of uh, women started working there is an interesting thing that happened there were a group of people who started uh, blaming feminism for the collapse of home cooking and we all know that was not really what happened what happened was there was no proper negotiation of division of labor at home so the food industry grabbed this as a perfect opportunity and they convinced women to stop arguing and to go with easy food as i conclude my speech all i want to tell you is one diet that would work for all of us is eat anything you want but prepare it yourself home cooking does have few issues like we can talk about the time and impediments that comes with it but on a larger picture it solves multitude of problems cooking is love made visible it is one light beautiful and miraculous and life changing practice that everyone should follow over to you toastmaster